Hey, Internet, it's been a minute. Uh, it's Wes, your host. Glad to see you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this video is going to be about when things don't go your way. When it rains, it pours. When life gives you lemons. Whatever you want to talk about. We'll talk about when things don't really quite go your way. And also, if, you, if you've been struggling with maybe certain parts of your creative uh, aspect and creativity, uh, we're going to kind of touch on that as well. But, you know, without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the episode. Hope you're doing well, like I said in the intro. Uh, today's a tough one. So what you're seeing is time-lapse footage of nearly 11 hours of video, of premium video that I was making for a tutorial. Now this is just a course specifically about portraits. I've had a few of my patrons ask about portrait paintings that they've been commissioned and stuff like that and wanted some tips and tricks. So I thought it'd be fun to make a full from blank canvas all the way to finished printable final uh just go ahead and make a portrait and kind of what to look forward to and maybe struggling blocks and stuff and we did the paintings in real time as a study discussed every aspect of it and come to find out all of the recordings the audio got corrupted uh, so that's a solid i don't know 16 17 hours worth of work kind of down the drain um and sam manley he's one of the artists that uh works for cubicle 7 one of my co-workers on warhammer uh wrath and glory he actually brought up a good point about hey let's just salvage it the best way we can because <laughs> it's a bummer uh i mean that's just it's just tough to go through that amount of and everything was right everything was good uh, i could listen to the previews all this other stuff save it out and everything but once it went to the final passes of it, whatever reason, the audio is just gone. It's not muted. It just doesn't exist. It. I don't know what happened. I've been making videos for 10 years, over 10 years now, like 12 years. This has never happened. I don't know what, uh, I think I know what happened, but I don't want to throw shade at a third party company. <laughs> anyway, uh, Neither, neither here nor there. It's, it's just a bummer. You work so hard on the thing, and then it's just not, it's not. You can't deliver it. It's not ready. It. You have to restart from the beginning, and that's what we're actually going to do here. So I'm going to take a few days of a break, kind of clear my head a little bit, but I'm actually going to be re-recording another premium tutorial series, anywhere from ten to twelve-ish hours. Just of portrait painting tips, tricks, real-time narration. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again. We're going to do it again. We're going to use a different picture. We're going to have a slightly different lessons. And it's going to work this time. Um, I'm After every single video lesson, I'm going to have live monitors up. And I did this time too, so I still don't know what really happened. Um, man. Hmm. Anyway, now you are seeing in a very, very, very fast time lapse kind of what is happening there. Um... Basically, I'll just give you the real, real quick version of it. Basically, you find a good reference. The reference has to have good lighting, whether it's a life study or a photograph. Then you go in, you transfer that reference onto your canvas. Uh, you make some compositional decisions. Then you add in your value. Then you add in your color. Then you do some finishing passes, tie it all together. Ta-da, done. So if you don't want to spend $10 on my upcoming tutorial, you just got all of that tutorial in about 35 seconds. <laughs> um... But it is, it, it, I'm, I'm going to value this tutorial on being the most comprehensive, in-depth, kind of nuggets of wisdom in real time as we get to a problem, discuss it, solve it. That's how it was. That's why I'm so bummed that it, it's essentially not usable. Now, we're using it here in the YouTube, but uh, it's, man, man. But we'll do it better. We'll do it better next time. Um... You know, it's just whenever you put that amount of time into it, it's always a bummer when stuff like that happens. But to kind of go on that same point, let's say you're working on a thing. It doesn't quite go the way you want it to. Um, it's fine to be mad. It's fine to be upset. It's fine for all of that to, you know, you're allowed to have your emotions. But don't let it really stop you. Um, 
believe in the idea believe in what you are trying to get maybe there's a different way to be a little more effective maybe there's some stuff you learned during that first one whether it's an art piece or a video or whatever you're making and maybe you can take that lesson and either do it again or save that lesson for next time um, i've been planning a portrait series for a while which is why i'm going to just go straight back to the drawing board on square one and uh, we're going to do the thing for real again we're going to do a whole thing but just know that it could be like oh well why don't i just record my landscape tutorial it's something different now or whatever but i'm in the mood of still doing the portrait it hasn't shaken me that badly it's a bummer i'm mad about it but you know you keep trucking so uh, over probably the next few days i'm gonna knock out another you know 12 hours of recording and um the piece will be better i really liked where this piece went i liked a lot of the changes and the the small tweaks that we were able to do to really get in there really make a portrait that looked like the reference but still had our artistic uh thumbprint on it um also another thing that i've been kind of struggling with if this is just going to be a big struggle video <laughs> the struggle is real uh let's talk about maybe parts of the creative process in general that you might be struggling with so i put it on twitter a few days ago i really like where my my first value passes and kind of sketches and ideas go i like that but then it feels like once i start rendering it loses a lot of the life that i may have had beforehand so i'm very much a quick sketcher person i'm a someone who's really big into kind of not concepting as far as designing things but concepting in regards to like key art and getting mood and emotion very quickly uh, I, I kind of learned that through the the John Singer Sargent, Anders Zorn methods that they would use in Eli Repin and uh, kind of your figurative realism painters um, to use small amounts of brush strokes in order to make a big impact. And I very much like that. And I'm I, that's what I like to go for whenever I create my stuff. However, being an illustrator, a lot of times you have to work way more refined, uh, way more rendered, polished, um, get rid of all the paint strokes type thing. And that's what I kind of struggle with. I, I realize that whenever I start trying to remove the parts that make it look like a painting, the interest just falls flat. And my biggest worry is that, and I've noticed it in my portfolio a little bit, and I've noticed this, um, I like to do a lot of like headshot type things and like shallow depth of field and really fun stuff like that. But the only worry I have is that is boring. Now it's cool from a creation standpoint because I get to solve all the problems, all the stuff that I love, let's say about this tutorial series. You know, you get to talk about it, solve the problem, you're in the thick of it, you're in the weeds. But at the end of the day, it doesn't make for a cool picture. And that's something you have to remember is, you know, and that's something I struggle with. It doesn't matter how many cool brush strokes and cool textures and stuff I have. If the thing I'm painting is boring, who cares? So that's kind of where I'm at right now mentally. It's like, I wonder if I can get make that next push, get that next level, if I start really adding some dynamic poses and dynamic camera angles and more than one or two people per painting and maybe a big fight scene and maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe more, maybe I need to study more comic books. Maybe I need to study more action, storyboard, uh, gesture drawing, like samurai movies, fighting games. You know what I mean? The, the, something that has a lot of kinetic energy. Maybe if we mix the crazy brush strokes and thick paint with something that's really dynamic, we're going to find the thing, the, the, the holy grail of like, this is the art. This is what I love to make. I was put on this planet to make this type of art. You fall into that pocket. And that's the goal of any artist or really any creative person. You want to find that exact thing that not only does it come naturally, but it also is challenging. It pushes you, you push new limits every single time, but you know for a fact it's going to turn out well. And that's the goal. And, you know, it's hard when things don't turn out well. Like, you know, this tutorial and, you know, some of my other art stuff, I maybe really like where it went but then i look back on it a few days later and i'm like no i can do better than that no i can do better I, i'm constantly raising the stakes and 
that might be healthy, that might not be healthy. I don't know. Um, that's up for other people to decide, I guess. <laughs> I just have this constant thing of, well, I can, I can push myself a little further. I can, I can swim a little deeper out into the ocean. I think I can make it. I wonder what's out here. And, and David Bowie has a great thing where he talks about always be a little bit out of your depth. That's when you're going to make your best work is when you're past your comfort zone. If you're in your comfort zone, you might make good work, but is it going to be great? And that's, that's the juggle. That's the, I don't know, that, that's the thing that I always come back to is like, yeah, I did this and I, I like the way it looks. Am I going to like the way this looks two years from now? Or my goal is that I'll look back on the art I did today or tomorrow a year from now and almost be embarrassed by how, like, oh my god, I thought I knew a whole lot and I didn't know anything. Now look at my work. It's so much better. It's so much more refined. It's more vivid. It's, you know, blah, blah, blah. Whatever kind of benefit you want to get out of it. But it, it just takes time. And it takes a process. And sometimes the process just doesn't go your way. It just doesn't. And uh, it's one of those I had to eat some humble pie and sit back and deep breath. And uh, it's such a bummer having all that data all of that and not even just the time investment because i make paintings i've made portraits this was a fairly quick portrait really i mean with narration talking about every single aspect it took like 10 hours that's actually pretty fast for a really realistic portrait but we went more stylized we erased a lot as you see here we did a lot of changes a lot of manipulations we did a lot of stuff but 10 hours is about average um for, for what I would do for like a, a finished piece for a client. Some clients it takes a little more, some a little less, but uh, 10 hours is about a good average. That's a, that's a little more than one solid work day of an eight hour work day. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think there's something to this. You know, I'm a big fan of karma. I think things happen for a reason, but uh, sometimes it's just not fun. It just doesn't, it doesn't work out the way you want it to. And it's okay. It's okay to be bummed. It's okay to just, you know, am I going to be mad about this two months from now? Once the thing is finally done and it's put out and it's probably better than it was before, am I going to be mad that this happened? Probably not. In fact, I may not even remember that it happened until I watch this video again. And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. That sucked. <laughs> you know, so... Just think about that. Is this something you're going to be super upset about two years from now? If not, let it go. Like, just, I don't know. You're, you're allowed to feel how you feel. You're allowed to wrestle with it however you want. It's just take that deep breath and be like, okay, this one didn't work. What do we do now? How do we move forward? That's going to happen. Um, just a little quick story uh, before we get out of here. I'm very happy that my piece pieces for uh, Cubicle 7 and Warhammer 40k Wrath and Glory are now published. They are out. I'm in the for, uh, Forsaken System Player's Guide, and it's about Gilead and kind of the world building and stuff. I have four pieces in that, and what's cool is if you get that book, if you go to Drive Through RPG, type in Warhammer 40k Wrath and Glory, and look at the Forsaken System Player's Guide, go look at the preview, look at the credits page. Look whose name is on the top booking. That's your boy. That's right, man. My name is in Warhammer Forever. I'm so stoked. Like, see, there's a lot to be excited about. Like, I think about that and I'm like, oh man, I just got to paint some more. You get that fire back. You get that adrenaline back. And you want to go and do good work. Uh, but there's roadblocks. But to bring up that Warhammer stuff, three of the pieces came... Well, two of the pieces came fairly easily. One of them actually was done after my second sketch. I turned it in, and they were like, this is perfect, thanks. And I was like, wait, no, I, 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 that was just an idea. I didn't know. And they're like, nope, it's great, awesome. Oh, okay, thanks. And I was worried. I was like, oh, well, they're going to wake up tomorrow and realize that I'm a fraud, or, you know, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, so that happened. The other one took about six different sketch revisions, which is about average. Um, that's, you know, that sounds about right, especially for a big intellectual property. Six is pretty good. Um, the other one took about 11, I think, if I'm looking at it. Um, uh, there was 11 sketches on a main one. And then there was one sketch. I have 32 revisions. 
And these are tiny. These are small. This is so exact. You can't imagine the type of stress I had every single day thinking, okay, I got to get it right. Because I mean, this is food on the table. Like, I, you know, I, I bundled it up to where I got paid in a single invoice. So until all my stuff is done and ready, I don't get anything. So you're talking about like a five week turnaround on something that I expected to get done in two weeks. So that last one was a bear. And it was, thank you to Zach Dale Clutterbuck, uh, my art director at Cubicle 7, because he had super patience. He really worked with me. Thank you to Sam Manley, everyone at Cubicle 7. This was my first rodeo. I wanted to do it right. Uh, they were really impressed with it, but they, they, they have the patience of Job, man, because I was constantly going back and forth. Like, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. I thought I just didn't know how to paint. I was like, what, what is, I, why am I not getting this? The other one I did in two, this one's taken 34. Like, why can I, did I forget how to do everything? But it's just, it is what it is. You, you set yourself up, you set problems up for yourself, and maybe you have to over, overcome those. And some of it, throw away what you have. Be ready to kill your darlings. You got to get rid of, if it's not working, it's not working. And maybe... Maybe this tutorial, the time lapse that you're seeing, was meant to be a YouTube narrated time lapse. Maybe it wasn't meant to be the full on thing on all the stores and all that stuff. Uh, maybe there was something I missed. Maybe there was, you know, I believe in karma. I do. And maybe this is a sign that, okay, that was a good first draft. Now do your real thing. Uh, so I just sigh because I know there's a lot of work ahead of me. Uh, I know, I know, I know we can do it, and I know it's there because you're seeing the proof in the pudding. But it's like, I, oh man, oh! If you've had this type of thing happen to you before, my heart goes out to you. It truly does. It's frustrating. It feels like how am I going to bounce back from this? But every single time that door shuts, another door opens. It just that is how the whole world works. In my 35 years of being alive. That's what I found out. Usually things happen for a reason. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just chaos. But maybe maybe I can improve. Maybe um, maybe it doesn't have to be 10 hours long. Maybe I could do this whole thing in 6 hours. And then do more bonus content or something. I don't know. But anyway, I have a lot to chew on. A lot to think about. Um, but thank you all for your support. Thank you for hanging out on YouTube here. As part of this little art community we have. Hit me up. If you have any questions, leave some stuff in the comments. I would love to hear. Well, it's kind of weird. I would love to hear your stories about things going wrong, but I promise it's not like a weird schadenfreude, like <laughs> I have no pain in other people's suffering. So, you know, my, my heart just does go out to you. Like, oh, man, it just, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know. But yeah, let me know if you've run into anything like that. You just couldn't nail down an art piece or if you're a composer on music, you just couldn't get the right notes and harmony or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, Maybe you tried baking something over and over and over and it just never came out right. And you're like, okay, maybe I'm not ready for this. I don't know. Like, what did you do? How did you deal with it? I would definitely like to know, but pour one out for this, uh, the beautiful portrait model that we got to draw and, and paint as part of the class. Wanted your footage to live on. Uh, I was happy with the outcome, but yeah, back to the old drawing board, I guess. But that's my time for this time. Uh, thanks so much for your support, and we will talk to you guys very, very soon. Peace.